everyone and welcome back to my color mixing series. This week we're going to be taking a look at how to mix purples, but before we do, let's go ahead and discuss what color qualifies as purple. Now you might be thinking, uh, Denise, you get purple when you mix red and blue together, duh. And others of you might be thinking, well, the color that you get when you mix blue and red together is actually violet, not purple. I think that these two possible responses say a lot about how we learn about our colors as children, or at least how Americans learn their colors as children, or at very least how I was taught in America when I was a child. Now, first off, I think I was probably told that the color that you get when mixing blue and red together is in fact purple, which many schools still teach today, but then later on, going into my adulthood, I do distinctly remember being told that the color is more properly called violet. I mean, it doesn't really matter what I call the color that we perceive as being violet or purple, but if it does matter to you, let's go ahead and take a quick look at the color spectrum for some more answers. Scientifically speaking, violet is the spectral color with its own wavelength on the visible spectrum. It's on the furthest end of the spectrum past blue and has the shortest wavelength frequency of any visible color that humans can see. Unlike violet, the generic name of purple doesn't have its own wavelengths, but instead is the color produced when you combine red and blue together. Now there's some really cool biology behind this is we as humans have three different types of cone receptors in our eyes that are each well suited to perceive a particular color or small set of colors. In the case of humans, our cones primarily perceive red, blue, and green light. So looking at this visual spectrum, we can clearly see that red and blue do not meet. They're on opposite ends of the spectrum. So how do we get purple when we combine blue and red? Well, our brains are pretty awesome, that's how. The color between red and blue on the spectrum is very clearly green, but the cones in our eyes that especially perceive the green color, when they're not firing or telling your brain that there's any kind of green in front of you, your brain says, okay, well, I have blue and I have red, but they're not making green, so it must be something else. And they make up a brand new color, which is what we call purple or magenta. Pretty cool, huh? There's some really neat videos here on YouTube explaining how this works in more detail, such as The Mystery of Magenta and This Is Not Yellow, and I'll put links in the description below. But for the purposes of this video, I think we've covered enough science and perhaps a little bit too much. Did I lose any of you? There is one more thing I really wanted to mention, and that is that culturally speaking, the meaning of the word violet and purple may vary. So in different regions of the world, um, the things that I just said might not make any sense in that context. So. Um, just take that with a grain of salt. I have a variety of tube purples and violets to show you just as I did for our green color mixing episode, but please note that this is a very limited selection and my collection leans extremely towards warm purples. I don't really like cool purples and violets all that much, so my samples are very biased and lack cooler shades. It is worthwhile to note that what I'm calling purple is generally indicated with a PV, which stands for pigment violet, not pigment purple, though some are made from shades of blue and red pigments as well. Unlike in the green episode where I mentioned that I don't really mind using the tube greens as long as they're nice and vibrant, I really do prefer to mix my own purples, as most of the tube colors do fall a little flat for me. With greens, there are tons of options, but purples are a lot more limited. I do have one exception, and that is that my Rose of Ultramarine is a super gorgeous color. However, it can only be used in certain compositions, and it's not appropriate for all situations due to its heavy granulation. So let's go ahead and get down to what you came here for, the color mixing. The colors that we're going to be using today are Pyrrole Red, Naphthal Red, Carmine, Quinacridone Rose, Red Violet, Thalo Blue Green Shade, Prussian Blue, Ultramarine, Cerulean, and Cobalt Teal Blue. In application, we need to know that the brightest, clearest purples are going to come from shades of reds and blues that are closest to each other or closest to purple however you want to look at it, meaning we need to use warm blues and cool reds for the brightest colors. Using warm reds and cool blues that are further away from purple will not get clear, bright colors, however they can be useful for using less intense colors or even grays. So let's go ahead and take a look. The first column here is going to be made using Pyrrole Red, which is a very warm red. Therefore, it's not going to give bright clear purples with any of the blues because it lacks any type of coolness. Instead, we're going to get soft, dusky colors that are lovely in their own way, but not necessarily what we'll think of when we're thinking of a bright purple. Next up is Napfall Red, which is also a warm red. This color, at least my version by M. Graham, is much more pigmented than Pyro Red, and so the colors are more vibrant and deep, but they're still not as bright as they would be with a cooler red. 
My favorite in this column is actually with the cerulean blue, which is a nice surprise because I wouldn't have thought to mix those two colors together. The middle column is made with carmine, which is a deep, cool red similar to alizarin crimson. These colors are much more rich, creating very dark tones when mixed with Prussian blue and creating bright, clear purples with the ultramarine. I should mention that throughout this entire chart, cobalt teal granulates heavily with every red it's mixed with, and you'll be able to see that better at the end when I show you the full chart. These colors are very muted since it's a greenish blue, and uh, there are some really pretty grays in there as well. The fourth column is made using quinacridone rose, which is my preferred red for mixing purples. I particularly like the Prussian and ultramarine colors, and the second color in the ultramarine box is actually very close to what you would get out of the tube of rose of ultramarine from Daniel Smith. The last reddish color that we're going to be using is actually Red Violet, which is an incredibly cool shade of red, leaning towards Red Violet, as its name implies. This makes really rich, deep, beautiful purples across any of the blues. It's a newer color for me thanks to my viewer Allison who sent it to me, and it's going to be added to my permanent palette for this reason. On the overview of the chart here, you'll be able to take a closer look at all the colors ranging from very red violets to deep blue violets and everything in between, and you can use whatever name or label you'd like to describe them. Alrighty everyone, well I hope that covered many of the things that you hoped it would. If you have any more questions for me about the content of this video, please leave me a comment below, and if you haven't seen my last video on the Portable Painter, be sure to check it out. I'm hosting a giveaway right now to help celebrate reaching 2,500 subscribers here on YouTube, and I want to especially thank all of you for your support to my patrons who help make these videos possible, and I will see you next time.